Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the church will say bigger amen. Amen. That amen does not have spiritual fire. And the church will say, believe in amen. amen. That amen is here to give his life to Jesus. Not born again yet. And the church will say, believe in amen. Amen. Listen, when you are in God's presence, be alert and sensitive. I told some of you, your prayer attitude is what is not making you get anything from God. I'm telling you. They are asking you to pray. Some people are looking like Lucas at Boost. The day devil will slap somebody. The day devil will slap somebody. Then you will know that when you come to the house of... This is the house of prayer. I'm telling you. It's the house of prayer. I, 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 I don't see nobody. I don't see any of you. You think I see you? I see nobody. I'm here to receive what God has for me. I'm here to pray. I was talking to a boy so many years ago. He said his mother is praying for him. I said, your mother is praying for you at your age. By the time I heard about him, the next time he has been deported, his mother is praying for him. And that's the mentality many of you carry. Your pastor is praying for you. Your mother is praying for you. Your uncle is praying for you. You people will cut fire by force. Whether you like it or not. Some of you, eh? The day fire will descend on you, your wig will not be on your head. I hear what I'm saying? Your wig will not be on your head. The fire will be too much that you will not be able to cut. You won't be able to leave that wig on your head. You will not be able to leave the wig. Take your seat in God's presence. The Lord bless you, instrumentalist. The only time many of us have to pray is only on Sunday. And even on Sunday... You are looking at your mate if he's praying very well then before you join the person to pray. They are spying. Is he praying? Let me pray. You better pray now so you don't become a prey tomorrow. You better pray now. So many prayer warriors today didn't want to be prayer warriors until they became praise. I'm telling you the truth. Just very few people have that but when they have been feasted upon by kingdom of darkness, they became prayer warriors. My mother is running a task and mountain to mountain for me. That woman too has heart in her body. What if that heart stopped working? Who will be running a task for you? I told the boy, I said, instead for you to be, to be sending prayer point to your parents, you are saying they are praying for you, drop in. Any prayer I pray for my daughter, when she learns that I pray, she must pray for herself. Then I will now be running from one mountain or to another for a child, God forbid. Must learn to pray on time. Don't let me say you people are product of prayerlessness. I don't know where you are coming from. I don't know from what churches or where or where. I don't know. No. No. Hey, tell you to pray. You don't want to pray. Have you seen governors praying before? Governors, I see someone this morning. You have not become anything yet, you are forming. If you now become something, what will happen? God will give you grace. That amen is not spiritual. In the name of Jesus. See, I'm not angry with you. When you begin to enjoy the fruit of prayer, many of you will not remember to call me again. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Many of you will not even remember my name. You will not even say you have crossed my path before. There are many people in town that have crossed my path and they have never called me. Again. And their life is doing well. If you get your money, it's not for me, it's for you. If your life is blessed, it's for you, it's not for anybody. It's for yourself, for your family, and for you to enjoy. So it's better you pray now. Pray your way into where God wants you to get to. Right now. When I was like many of us here, we we'll pray and our rooms are vibrating. Rooms are vibrating. Rooms are literally vibrating. The power of God will descend and shake in the foundation of hostels. Some of you are in the hostel in your room. Your roommate is oppressing you. Can't do anything. Oppressing you spiritually. Oppressing you academically because you have a prayerless lifestyle. You can't pray. You can't do anything. 
There is no room for coldness here. And there is no room for lukewarmness here. If you find yourself here by mistake, by mistake you will catch fire. Amen. Somebody excited this morning? Yes, Are you angry with me? No. If you love me, say I love you, Pastor. I love you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I started a series this month as our team is breaking limitation. Breaking limitation. And today I'm looking at breaking limiting generational causes. Generational causes. Limiting generational causes. Which means it didn't stop with your forefathers. It transferred to your grandfather. Your grandfather refused to pray where to break it. The thing came on you. And now you are looking at me as you to pray. There are forces of darkness that are transferred from one generation to another. And it affects people's destiny. And these causes, all they do is they limit your destiny. They limit you. It is not your fault, but by bloodline connection, it was inherited. Then it affected you. Causes. Are most times a product. Sometimes of our actions. Things we have done. Consciously. Unconsciously. And some people are working upon a cause they don't know. Some people know that there is a cause upon their head, but they are doing nothing about it. That's the worst category of people. To know that you are under a siege and you are now having a romantic encounter with the siege. You have a problem with it and you are doing nothing about it. That is the worst that can happen to a man. Knowing that you have a problem, but you are nursing the problem instead of terminating it. What does it mean to be blessed? To be blessed means to be recognized and accepted by God. And many people think that when you are blessed, it means that you are rich. Listen to me. Blessing does not equal riches. One of the fruits of blessedness is wealth. There are many blessed people on earth today who are poor. And there are many poor people, to be sincere, who are also blessed. You remember the story of the poor man? He was accepted before God, but he was poor. You remember the rich man? Who had everything, but he was not blessed. So, to be blessed is to get approval and recognition from God. I remember Abraham, he was blessed and he was also rich. So, to be blessed does not mean that you have to be rich. And people who are poor can also be blessed. But one of the evidence is just one of being blessed by God is wealth. But that is not the sum totality of it. And that's the mistake many people. There are many rich men on earth today. Do you know? But God has no approval of them. As a matter of fact, if you are looking, we have many more prosperous people who have never confessed Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. Many more prosperous people on earth. If we begin to name their name, they don't believe in Jesus. But they have wealth. And we have many people who God knows them by their name. But sincerely, they don't have anything. So what is my definition of being blessed? My definition of being blessed this morning has nothing to do with money. But has everything to do with God approving you and knowing you as his own. That is a blessed life. When God can call you by his name. Moses was blessed. He was not necessarily rich. God could walk into him at any time and have an encounter and communication with him. That is a blessed life. What life more do you need when God can walk into your room, sit with you, and have an encounter with you? That's a blessed life. 
A life of sacredness. A life of total surrenderedness. A life of consecration and set apart for God. That is a blessed life. A life that can pray. A life that can yield to service. That is a blessed life. Before God. So, can I say that there are many Christians in church who think they are blessed, but they are not blessed. Until God can have your name in the book of life, you are not blessed. Until God can have your name written, wide, this is my beloved son, you are not blessed. Remember the story in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. I already let up verse. He said, now we're standing in this, rejoice not that the spirit has subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus was telling them, he said, don't worry. He said, you know what? I've given you power, authority. Demons will be subject to you. And they will help you. We can cast out demons. To cast out demons doesn't mean you are blessed, sir. Anointing to cast out demons doesn't mean your ministry is blessed. Anointing to raise up the dead doesn't mean your ministry is blessed as well. But the blessedness is, is your name written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? He said, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion. Many of us like such anointing. But he said, no, don't rejoice. That is not it. You are not blessed yet for having all these things. He said, now begin to rejoice. If your name is written in heaven. What is cause? A cause is when a spell or a negative pronouncement has been made upon a life and is limiting the functionality of that life. When a pronouncement has been made to limit the functionality of that life, then you know that that life is operating under a cause. When the things you used to do before, suddenly you can't do them again. But adventure, your life is operating over a course. Maybe you used to enjoy some level of authority before, but something happened at this point. Maybe your life is operating under a course because somebody pronounced something upon you. Maybe an enchantment, maybe an incantation was made to limit your life by evil pronouncement. But I stand here today, every curse that has been pronounced upon your life in the hidden, in the open, knowingly or knowingly, by the power in the name of Jesus, that curse shall be averted in the name of Jesus. Every pronouncement that is making your journey to look like the journey of a snail. You are supposed to be running, but you are crawling. Because somebody said to you that you will go and return back the same way. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But for adventure, you have been told the same way you went. That is the same way you are going to return. I stand with the mandate of fire here today. Everybody that has made such a pronouncement upon your life, they will see your rising to prominence in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, words are powerful. And there is no way a curse can be placed upon a life without a pronouncement. Even when God wanted to place a curse on man in the beginning, he had to speak the word. He could have done it without telling them. But he had to speak the word because the words, they are powerful. There are ways that people who can get curses upon their life. Number one. You can get a curse from God himself. God curse people. If you don't know. Do you understand? God does what? God curse people. The God that we serve is a merciful God. But he's also a consuming fire. He's a merciful God. But he's also a consuming fire. Yes, God can instill curses on people. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. We saw after man sinned, after the woman gave the fruit to the man and he ate. And God appeared before them and cursed them. Cursed them literally. He said, I will greatly multiply that sorrow. That is not a blessing. It is a curse. If your sorrow was one before, he said, now we multiply it. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. 
and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. It was not so in the beginning. It was not so in the beginning. Can you see such a cause? The desire of a woman always will be that of her husband. She will have no desire. Nothing more is more important. Just the husband alone. And when she wants to give birth, before joy comes, sorrow must go forth for her. Can you imagine? Nobody wants to enjoy sorrow before joy. Sir, God is, God is, so, God is so big that he can make women to give birth without sorrow at all. Is it not God? Can he not do an undo? He can do an undo. He said, but you will bring forth with pain. He said, and it shall rule over thee. Can I say this as I read in that scripture? All of you preaching in equity, equity, men and women, equality or anything. In God's agenda in the beginning, he created them men and female. Everybody were equal. Until sin came. And the woman was cursed. In the beginning, man and woman was the same. But when God cursed woman, man became above. So why are you fighting it? I don't know why women are always fighting it. God said it was so, and it was so. The man is above the woman. It was not so in the beginning. But because the woman gave the bad fruit to the man, maybe that's why God said, you know what? You are thinking you need somebody over your head. Now the man will begin to rule you so that you can, you can always... They say somebody say, have sense, right? I didn't say that, too. it's not my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just trying to, to, to distract us in a way. Glory to God. My point is that God cursed the woman. And then God cursed the man. And God said unto Adam, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of thee, of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Can you imagine? In sorrow, pain, hardship, hard labor. Shall thou eat all the days of thy life? He said, Tons also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the wheat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. And out of that dust thou shalt also return. Look at what iniquity brought. Until today, man is still laboring to make money. I told people, I saw all of you sitting down here today. What you are looking for here in this land is nothing but money, not God. Can I say the truth to you? Everyone sitting here today, the buses, train station, everybody running from pillar to post, running everywhere on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some people don't even come to church. Everything you are running, looking for is what? Money. Looking for money. That's why everybody is looking for. How many of you came here because God sent you here with a money to fire? Let me see your hand up. One. Only one person. Two. Three. Out of this congregation. He said, out of the ground. You will labor to get it. So God cursed. In the book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10 to 11. The Bible says, say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. And he will eat the fruit of his doings. He said, but woe unto the wicked. You know what woe means? He said, cursed be the wicked, for he shall be healed with him. That's what KJB said. He said, cursed be the wicked, for he shall be healed with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given unto him. Is that a blessing? Who is cursing there? Me? It's God. So God can place a curse upon a life. At the end of this series, I'll be teaching on what are the things that you can do that can make God place a curse. That's the way I'm going. But I'm trying to buttress the point to tell you that the God you and I serve, you can either get blessing from him or he can curse you. Depending on the works of your hands. Number two. Curse can come from the word or from the law. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass that if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, to observe to do all his commandments and his state which I commanded to do this day, all these curses shall come upon thee. Not only it will come upon thee, it will overtake thee. You know what that means? It will go to your generation yet unborn. Generational curses. By virtue of disobedience, all these causes, if you refuse to obey my law, everything I've written in the scripture, if you don't write it, the, there are causes in this Bible, you don't know. If I begin to read some part in the Bible to you, many people might decide not to be a Christian again. That I don't know is even good. There are some dangerous causes again in the scripture. Go to Sam, go to some dangerous place. Causes, do you understand what I'm trying to say? You will be wondering, that, is this the same God that you and I will serve? He said, if you refuse to act into the world, all these causes shall come upon thee. Not only that, what a pity. It's now going, what is something overtaking? What does it mean? It's running ahead of your future, right? So, the cause is not for you alone. But for those who are yet to be born. But I pray here today, everyone that any cause has overtaken, mercy will speak for you in the name of Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm also praying for myself. Anywhere, any cause has gone ahead of me or gone ahead of you, anyone connected to you, mercy will intercede for you in the name of Jesus. In the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 1 to 24, you remember when the people rebelled against God and when Moses was with God and they said, you know what, how can we continue to wait for Moses? Is it that there are no places on, in Eden that we want to go and die, let us make unto ourselves a graven image. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared in the congregation of the people. And God was said to destroy them, but Moses interceded and pleaded that God, please don't, don't destroy these people. But God said, yes, I will not destroy them. But there is something I will place upon their life is limitation. None of them will enter the promised land except Caleb. Except Caleb. When a man's life is operating under a curse, you are operating under a limitation. You can see it, but you never take it. And there is nothing more painful than somebody to see your breakthrough almost taking it. But it never drops in your hand. Every power that awaits you at the junction of your breakthrough. Every near success syndrome that affects people's destiny as a result of a negative pronouncement. Maybe your father did something and somebody made a pronouncement and is affecting your life. That cause is averted in the name of Jesus. And we come to the point where our character at times brings us cause. You can date 16 women. At the same time, and put their head together, destroy their life, and expect your life to go scot free. No, it can't. It can't. Hey, you're a sharp guy. I'm so smart. I'm handsome. Many people will use their handsomeness later in future to cry because of the fruit of their hands, because of what they have done. Say you are, is it Casanova? What did they call them? Casanova, right? By the time the devil is done with you, you will become a canvas in his leg. Not Casanova. You will be wearing you up and down on anywhere. Anywhere, anytime, the way he wants it. So when you refuse to obey God's word, number three, people can be cursed by men, mere men like you and I. People can curse you. These causes are self-inflicted cause. Remember the story of Noah? Noah cursed his son. He saw his father drunk, harm, right? And instead for him to help his father, he laughed at him and went to report to his true brothers. And his brothers took clothes and went with their back and went to cover their father's nakedness. But when the father was praying for them later, he was the first, but his bad tries of and it cost him. There are people with authority in their mouth. I've told you, words are powerful. 
when pronounced, it always performs anything. Somebody did something when I was coming to this land. I will tell you a simple story. That woman took my document after I finished paying her. Took everything. And refused to return it back to me. Say I'm holding her money. So I told her, I said, listen, I don't know where Ukraine is. I was on my home when God told me to go to Ukraine. And that is the truth. I didn't come to Ukraine to look for money. I came because God sent me on a mandate. Left my school final year. Quitted. And I was looking for where is Ukraine. And so you decided to stop me. I told her. I said, if anybody can stop God's work, then you'll be able to stop it. But if you cannot stop God's work, nobody can. I told her, I said, look at this, your shop in Abuja here, office. You will set plantain here. And you will remember once upon a time, you tried to stop what God wanted to do. And I left her with all the documents. I came to Ukraine. After a space of some months, she was caught in Arkov. In the cold, she was naked. They stripped her clothes naked. Nothing inside the cold. And they pushed her out in cold winter period. That was not enough. As she was landing in Nigeria, she landed in the hand of EFCC. From EFCC to prison till today, no one's story about her. Her agency or whatever is doing crashed to hell. And when they told me the story, I said, God, why? He said, but you told me she will sell plantain. And until she says plantain, unless I pray, she must sell plantain in front of that office. There are people that can inflict curses on you. Men, mortal men, but God has given them authority. They can be children of God or they can be on the other side. The same way with parents. That's why many people, you toy with your parents, you are toying with your destiny. The mother that gave birth to you. I have seen a woman who cost her children with her two breasts. One day, the one in U.S. bought tickets. Appeared in Nigeria. The one in UK bought tickets. The same day, two of them landed in Nigeria. The same day. It cost them with their two, with their two breasts. So curses can come upon people by men. People can curse people. And it works. You remember the story of Reuben? His father cursed him. He said, you, Reuben, you went to lay with my wife. He said, you are supposed to be my glory and my strength. He said, but it has been taken away from you. He says, it has been taken away from you. Genesis chapter 49, 3 to 4. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first one of my strength. Excelling in honor, excelling in power. He said, turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. What? When I read it, I was shocked again as if I never read it. He said, you know what happened? 40 years had gone. What Robin did when his father was praying, 40 years passed, but his father did not forget. 40 years time, when the man was dying, he called him to dish him his own portion. He said, unstable as the waters. Then I went ahead to read the life of Reuben. There was nothing successful about his story after then. The curse followed him. His inheritance, where he pitched his tent, where he lived. Everything that followed Reuben after then. No inheritance was given to him. People can curse people. But I'm here to speak over your life. That everyone that has cost you, that cost is neutralized in the name of Jesus. These people don't receive that. They are not appearing like you understand what I'm trying to say. Every cause that has been pronounced upon your destiny, whether in the hiding, whether in the open, whether in the public, whether through an enchantment or incantation, I decree by the message of God that cause is neutralized in the name of Jesus. Reuben's destiny was limited. He said, look at this. Look at, look at what they describe him. He said, one, you are supposed to be my glory. Take it from him. Number two, you are supposed to be my strength. Take him from me. Number three, you are supposed to excel. Take him from him. As stable 
and as stable as waters. You'll be doing it, gonna, gonna, kiri, gonna, gonna. You know what gonna, gonna means in Yoruba? Jaga, jaga. Some people, you don't know what's happening to them. They can't sit somewhere for one minute. They sit down, they sit down, they sit down like, like weary. Like, no, no, like, it's not that nothing is wrong with them. Possibly somebody has said something against their life. And they can't just sit down somewhere. They can't just sit down. The adrenaline is too much. Too much adrenaline everywhere. They cannot, see, let me tell you, if you cannot focus on one subject, something is wrong with you. There are some people, they cannot stay focused for 30 minutes. That's a problem. See, as, as, as the waters are unstable, so shall you be unstable. You'll be going like this, like this. Like the, your life will be turbulent. You know what that means? It means that his life will be top, and there was so much turbulence in the life of Reuben. Everyone here that your life has been characterized by series of turbulence. I decree every storm be still today in the name of Jesus. You can be cursed from an idol worship. When I was growing up, my mother told me a story. Apologies to people that come from that place. Oh. My mother said, there is no way a Benin man will know God and not have a salubwa. <laughs> so she told me, never marry anybody from Benin. Did you hear me? I said, yes. It was just a superstitious, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just a normal, popular, whatever. Because when we were growing up, everyone we live with in the barracks who appear to say they gave their life to Jesus. Every year they go back and they still bring that gold that was a at the back of their house and they're doing it. So, by observation, severally and severally, they just came to that conclusion that people from Benin, there is no way they know God. They will still go back to Osaloboa. That's not correct. Don't get me wrong. Just what I'm trying to say. There are genuine... Bishop Benson in the house is from Edo State. On fire for God. That's the father of faith, right? Is that correct? And I know some people here who are from Benin who are fervent. You know what I'm trying to say? But I'm just, I'm just telling, I'm just trying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Exodus chapter 20. My time is fast spent. 3 to uh, 5. He said, thou shalt not have other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above. Or that it is in the head beneath. Or that is in the water under the head. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them. Nor serve them. For I the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Upon who? To, to the what? How many generations? Is he visiting them by blessing them? He said no. When I visit one. Ten years. Another ten years. So thirty years ahead they will suffer. Then I will start again from that 30 years. You understand what I'm trying to say? So your born children already have become a product of a generational curse because of an idol worship in your family. One man that refused to acknowledge God. And I've seen that pattern happen before. I'm in the deliverance ministry and I've seen altars of many years idol worship affect children that never serve that God. But that God comes after them. Can I pray for you? Lift up your right hand to heaven. Every idol from your father's house. Ancestral gods. Ancestral idol. That is affecting people. In the name of Jesus. I decree the mark of exemption for you. In the name of Jesus. Every effect of that idol upon your life. Even maybe you bear such a name. Uh, or go something. Shall go something. Or yeah something. That is deep yeah something. That is affecting your name. The effect of that name is neutralized in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. He said I will visit even to the third generation. For them that hate me. Everyone that worships an idol hates God. Everyone that worships an idol hates God. And God is an enemy to any enemy of his enemies. You know what I mean? If you are God's enemy, God is an enemy to you. That's what it means. He said, come, how long can you be between two masters? If you want to be for God, be for God. If you want to be for Baal, be for Baal. Why having that secret God at the back? What is the essence of burning the candle? What is it for? 
Why are you burning the candle up and down? Save your money. Go and eat in McDonald's. Why are you burning the candle? What is the incense for? Go bruise your knees and pray to God. Why do you have to wash 17 times in the water? Why are you idolizing Christianity? Why? The word of God is enough to deliver you. It's enough to deliver you. It's enough. Why must you kill a ram and a goat and a cow before your life can be better? And that is the kind of Christianity many of us we want. I told somebody one day, his problem was very big. I told him, go and fast and pray. He said, Pastor, is that all? I said, what else do you want? Okay, go and buy me fowl now. <laughs> buy me fowl, I will eat it. And I will invite you for the lunch and we eat together. That fowl you bought, oh, I prepare lunch with it and we eat together. Since you don't believe that God can answer you. Hey, we eat it together. <laughs> to buy me fowl, buy me fowl. Hallelujah. Buy me fowl, no problem. There is no sin in eating chicken. Is there a sin in the Bible? It's not cost. I can eat it. There's nothing wrong with me. And that's why many of us are being fooled today. We are practicing so much idolatry in the kingdom. Some of you can't sleep until you burn seven candles on your head. The day your house will catch fire, you will be in debt. You will be in debt. You will be in debt. Can't do under your bed. Can't do in the room. Can't do everywhere. Can't do. What is chasing you? What is chasing you? What is chasing you? Why you? You go to the toilet to hold the candle. What is, what is happening? You want to write an exam? You hold the candle. Why you are reading? Before you burn, you put another one. That's what's making you assimilate. You burn thirty candles. Nothing in your head. You will fail. You will fail. <laughs> Hallelujah. God hates idol worshipping. And you see the reason why people do this is they believe that it works with their faith. Now I'm not condemning anybody. Do you know what I'm trying to say? But I'm trying to say that your news and your communication with God is enough to help you. Yes, Nothing more than that I tell you. Somebody called me one day and said they have to do one thing and do something. I said not me. Did you miss the number? You missed the number? I said, I can't buy any of those things. So, If God wants to take it, let him take it. If you cannot hear me, let him not hear me. Some of us need to come to that point of desperation. That God still hears prayers on your news. Right in your room, beside your bed. As you are sitting right now, as you are speaking to God. God can hear you. And you see, that's why we have so many people who are easily deceived in this kingdom. Easily deceived in this kingdom. So I know people that until you tell them to do something, they don't believe that their prayer has been answered. So you must tell them, so you push the pastor or the prophet to extort you. You are the ones pushing them to do it. Please don't get me wrong. There are some exceptional parts. Some exceptional parts. Where God can give you some specific... If God is giving you specific instruction to do it, it's different. Maybe sow a seed, right? Give to the poor. Maybe tell you to give to ten lepers. You know what I'm trying to say? Like something like that. that that's okay. But when you make it a point of idolatry, it's a, it's a problem. Before you have a headache, you think somebody is doing you. You are running up and down. And finally... How can people get cuss upon their head? I call this number four. Sorry, number five. <clears throat> I call it the cause of seed time and harvest time. Galatians 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows, that man shall reap. This is a cause that has been triggered by so And I've told people severally that life is a seed. Every day you live, you are sowing a seed. Every single day you live. You that can cheat people, keep cheating. You are sowing a seed. The Bible said the cause of the Lord is in the house of a thief. If you can cheat people and keep making wealth, keep gathering wealth. Keep gathering it. Keep gathering the cause that you call wealth today. Keep cheating people. Keep defrauding people. If you can do it, those people who can continue to cheat, keep cheating. That's what Revelation is saying. Those who can steal, keep stealing. Those who can kill, 
keep stealing, steal, keep doing it. Keep making other people cry and think that you will have a smile on your face. God is not a stupid God. You can't put tears on people's face and expect to get blessing. Can I ask one person a question here? If somebody's come your father $100,000, what will you pray for the person? That God should bless him, prosper with the money. Is that what you're going to pray? Never. What will you pray? You will curse the person. And, and this is the truth where many of us don't want to hear. This is where I'm, I'm enemy to many of us now. Not only you, many people. Many years ago, I preached and half of the church left. Those who do yahoo yahoo, they left the church. Whether you come or not, God will build this church. But that you would think I will not say the truth. You can't scare me. If you cheat people, you will be cheated. Your generation will be cheated until you change. You can't keep stealing from people and causing them pain and expect God to be happy with you. Some people died because of what you did to them. Or what, not you, not you. What some people did to them. You rip their entire family of their savings. And you think you can run and... No, you can't. You can't make people cry and think God is happy with you. You can't do a cost job and be blessed. You can't do a cost job and be blessed. Many people, they kind of cost upon their head. They have transferred it to their generation yet unborn by what they have done. There is no money you need on earth that God cannot give you. It may take time, but God will give it to you. Somebody said to me, say what other job is here to do? There are many other jobs to do. Apart from jobs of cheating people. The curse of the Lord is in the house of a thief. The curse of the Lord is in the house of a thief. Let it be ringing your brain. The curse of the Lord is in the house of a thief. The curse of the Lord is in the hand of a thief. My joy is to see that when trumpets sound, you and I will get raptured to heaven. So I will tell you the truth. Because I want your life to be free from causes. Is God able to bless? Yes! God can prosper you. The Bible says the blessing of God that make it rich. And he added no sorrow to it. There is no situation you have been through that somebody has not gone through before in life. But they maintained integrity. I've had a story of how my spiritual father had drove taxi before. He didn't have to cheat. I've, I've told you before here. I have driven taxi before. You don't, know any, you don't know anything about taxi. I'm a good taxi driver. What are you talking about? Good taxi driver. I told you how I was speaking shit. I was speaking dog shit. The only job the man could look at me with my MBA is that I should be picking shit. But I was speaking that poopoo with joy. No kind of, I will pick all, the, the field is so big like, and I was picking dog shit for a long time. Am I smelling dog shit this morning when I came to church? No, or was it written on my forehead that I'm, I'm, I've picked dog shit before? There is dignity in walking with your hands. So that you don't get cursed. Avoid cheating people. Not only that. Your character. The way you live your life. You are cheating people. You take people's money. To feel good. To do fine boy. Do fine girl. Ladies. You keep scanning get different men. Collect money from this one. Collect money from this one. The day they will catch you and cut one of your leg. You will say God is wicked. Instant judgment. Instant judgment. You say, I know how to do it. I know how to play around the guys. They won't say anything. One we cut one leg. One we cut the hand. One we cut the other part. And they share it as, as, as their emblem in their room. This is my trophy. That I got. The same thing with men. Some men need to be castrated. Everywhere you are just sowing seed. Ah, the reward is coming. The reward of that seed sowing is coming very, very soon. He said, I come quick and my reward is with me. To give to every man according to his works. Keep sowing the seed. Keep pointing it everywhere. Keep pointing it. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. It's a seed. Keep sowing. Every young girls that come to the country because they are naive, you take advantage of them. Keep sowing the seed. Keep sowing. Are you angry with me, church? Why 
am I saying this? Because God wants our life to be free from causes. Sir, there is nothing enjoyable after you have gathered, then later it scatters. I've told, shared the story of a man who is now a deacon in a church, a prominent church. I won't mention the name. This man cheated somebody. Somebody shared the story with me. Cheated somebody of millions of dollars from Uzbekistan. The man eventually died from that fraud. But when this man went many years, he didn't know what was going to come after him. He, was, he even had contact with the king of Dubai. But when the case started, the king of Dubai di distanced himself. Can you see what God has planned for him? Oil deal. Went to prison. Seized everything he had. Tracker on his leg. He cannot leave the nation. He can't do any business. He can't do anything from to square zero. Even when he had new deals to seal right here in this country, he couldn't come back because that's how he is born again. But the wages of sin still follows him. Many of you think you cheat people and go. Don't worry. God will forgive you, but he will come after you. My father says something. I quote him. It is better to do right than to try to correct wrongs. It is better to do right than to try to correct consequences. Of your wrongdoing. It's better. Just to do it right. It's better. Your futures are great. I need nobody to tell me. Everyone sitting here. Your future is great. If it is toilet you can clean. Keep cleaning it. If it is to sweep. Keep sweeping it. If you are cooking. Keep cooking. But make sure. You are doing it. Why are you not thinking about your unborn children? Why are you not thinking about the innocent kids that will come from you? Because of money, you sell your conscience? For how much? It's not worth it. Quickly, as I close, I will give you. When to recognize that your life is operating under a cost. Number one, your birthright is substituted. When what belongs to you, suddenly or easily, they, are, they can give it to other people. You are the one that deserves the promotion, but they say, no, mm -mm, we can't give her. No, she's better, but let's give it to somebody else. Something is wrong with your life. Check. A cost is at work, limiting your, your life. You say, you are indeed my first bomb, but because you defy your father's bed, you will not excel. Number two, nothing good comes out of you. No matter what effort you put in, nothing good ever comes out when you're operating under a cost. No matter the effort, no matter how hard you work, no matter how you keep working hard, but nothing. But I'm here to announce to somebody today, your years of labor without reward is over in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number three, when things begin to go down suddenly for you, you are rich before suddenly it goes down. You had a lot of people partners working with you suddenly they start taking their leg one one ah, we can't partner with you anymore what's the reason no reason they start distancing themselves from you your business partners suddenly go down and you begin to go down the slope into depth check you might be operating under a course number four when your head is bowed down when you begin to serve people who are supposed to save you people who you need to serve then they begin, you, you, who, who need to serve you, you begin to serve them. Your head is bowed down. People that need to call you Ogasa, you call them Ogasa. Something is wrong somewhere. There is a limitation working upon your head. When your hard labor amounts to nothing. And finally, number six, when there is persistent sorrow in your life, it's possible there is a cause at work. Nothing ever makes you happy. It says depression. It might not be depression, no. They say it's the weather. It might not be the weather. It might be that there is a limitation over your head that needs to be broken.